it's a very great pleasure and great honor to be invited to give, an, to give a talk in honor of Masaki. Uh, when I started studying mathematics in the early 80s, I mean, I learned a lot from uh, SKK, which I have to say was not so easy to read. Uh, uh, also, I learned a lot from uh, the much easier paper on the rationality of roots of the B functions, and also many things in studying the lecture notes from the Viltanus uh, lectures. Uh, when I was uh, proposed to give a talk, I mean, I had to think about what I could talk about. Because my problem is that uh, in recent years, I was mostly involved in model theory, non euclidean geometry, things like that, which are very nice, but maybe do, do not fit so well with uh, this conference. So I have decided to, to give a lecture on R spaces. And I, I will mostly concentrate on, on work by other people. So I have to start by reminding what what arc spaces are. So historically, uh, the study of arc spaces uh, started in the 60s by uh, early work by John Nash, which was unpublished uh, until the 90s. And then, uh, uh, there was a big uh, comeback uh, uh, when uh, Maxim introduced uh, motivic integration. So uh, K, uh, we will work of our field, K. We will uh, take a variety of a K. By variety, I mean a scheme of finite type, uh, reduced and separated. And for any integer n, we have uh, ln of x, which is a space of n z, which uh, represents the functor from uh, k schemes to sets sending something called z okay so uh, ln of x is a k scheme Uh, we have truncation maps and uh, one, may, one may define the arc space as a inverse limit of these guys and so uh, these morphisms are, are fine, they are very easy to understand, and so this is in a natural way a scheme. So it has some universal properties, so if you have any uh, field extension, uh, an L point of this space uh, is just uh, LT point of X. And in fact, this is very easy to prove, but in fact, there is a theorem of BAT that the same holds uh, for any uh, uh, K algebra oh. L. But surprisingly, this is very hard to prove. It uses derived geometry. I mean, it's, it's strange. I mean, it says no direct proof of it. Okay, but we won't need that. So, first example is a fine space, AD, which, okay, let's choose coordinates. 
like this. And uh, L of AD is just uh, you have an uh, infinite number of variables. OK, you are just parametrizing this power series. And uh, if uh, x is uh, closed uh, in AD, defined by polynomial equation FL, uh, say, it's easy to get uh, equations for uh, the corresponding oh it's not it's a it's a bad one it's a good one okay so in the, if x is for simplicity if x is alpha and or quasi projective i suppose it's easy to to verify this for k algebras by by direct uh, like for alpha and k, it's trivial. Yeah. But yeah. But just is for any scheme. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and uh, so how do you get equations from LX? Okay, so you have a naive way to write down equations. You, you plug in a power series uh, XIT into the equation F equals zero. You develop. And uh, you, 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 you have the coefficient of, of, the, of, uh, t to, of the, all the t to some power. But you have a, this provides your equation, but you have a more advanced way, a more conceptual way. In fact, you have, you have uh, some uh, Hasse-Schmidt derivation. Sending so di uh, okay it's not good I mean okay I was I have switched uh, the indices uh, it's still it's still correct <laughs> even if it's disturbing. So these are as a Schmidt derivation, and then uh, Lx is just defined uh, by uh, by these guys. It's completely equivalent to the naive description, but it's a bit more conceptual. And in general, if uh, If x is affine, uh, uh, then uh, uh, okay, these spaces are also affine, and this we know. But uh, and uh, infinity are just uh, as a Schmidt uh, derivation of k. Okay. And uh, here you just have to truncate uh, the Hasse-Schmidt derivation up to the very end. Okay. So uh, I will concentrate on the case where x is a singular variety. So we have a truncation morphism from Lx to ln of x. And uh, when uh, x is uh, singular, 
of course, in general, uh, pi n will not be surjective. This means you have equations and uh, you have uh, uh, solutions up uh, power series solution up to some degree and you're asking if they lift to actual solution and there is an obstruction to do that when you are not smooth okay but it follows from uh, a, res a, re a result of Greenberg that pi n of Lx is constructible. Okay, I should have said that uh, these Lns are uh, of finite type. And so this, as I said, is a constructible set. Why is it? Because Greenberg says that, okay, to know uh, that you are liftable to an actual uh, solution, it's enough to know that you are liftable uh, high enough. And this, this means that the uh, pi n of this guy is also uh, pi mn of some lm for m big enough. And then you, you apl apply Chevalier theorem. Okay? Now, uh, this leads to a f very old result. So we consider the Grothendieck ring of varieties with a class of the affine line inverted and we have this theorem that now is quite old by the Neff and myself so it was published in 99 so if you consider uh, so pn of lx is constructible so the liftable arcs uh, is form a constructible set, so they have a class in this ring. And with the next, we prove that this is rational. So this shows a strong regularity of this pi n. And uh, of course, uh, the statement and the proof came by analogy with the periodic, uh, periodic integration. And to prove this, we used uh, uh, motivic integration and uh, what I would like to concentrate on today is <coughs> a small lemma in, in this paper by Jan and myself and many things I will uh, talk about today are variations or elaborations of this small lemma of course I don't claim I don't claim at all that the theorems by other people are included in this lemma but this lemma can be seen as kind of uh, uh, ancestor for, for such a result. So uh, what is this uh, lemma saying? Yes? Do you have an expression for this rational function? Or maybe you're going to discuss it, but. Oh, ah, it's a good point. The good, OK. You have, to, you have different kind of series, and sometimes it's easy to prove they're rational, sometimes it's not so. So uh, in the, it's easy when, uh, for instance, you can compute things explicitly on a resolution. And uh, if, I, for instance, this series is also rational. What does it mean, the rational series? Of wait, wait, wait. I can only ans answer one question at a time. <laughs> So this series is rational too, but this is easy because uh, you can view it on a resolution. Ah, you, it's pure and characteristic zero. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is not known in, 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 in characteristic not zero. OK? And so uh, to answer Valerio's question, uh, the point is that it's, it's quite hard to compute this, uh, even uh, for it's in low dimension, in small dimension, and so on. I mean, it's not. I mean, it, it's not computable on a resolution, so you don't have many many things you can do to compute it. Yeah. It also fills now new manuscript by Kiranaka. <laughs> no, but it would not help to know. It would not help. Huh? <laughs> it would not help because it, it, it's not enough to know resolution, and it's not needed to either. So, is because. 
Even in the case of resolution, even, okay, it's perhaps it's proven in calcitic P, perhaps not, I don't know, but at least it's conjecture. But things we use here, specific to calcitic zero, there is no sensible conjecture in calcitic P. So the situation is worse in some sense. And uh, Offer was asking a question, wh what does it mean to be rational? In fact, there is a more the statement is more precise, so the denominator have a very precise type, and so they, if I would have written the more precise statement on the blackboard, it would be clear what is meant by rational, but I don't want to, 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 to do it here. And why ln, why the sum of ln x is easy using resolution? Because. Because it's easy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the only p way to prove something is easy to do it, I think. OK. <laughs> uh, <laughs> OK, so um, the whole st story here about is, of, uh, is the fact that x is singular. And so we, ha we have to sum have to. OK, the, okay, the game is you have some singular, s you have a singular part of x. OK, I, I, I picture an uh, arc like that. So if the arc is completely outside, it's nothing important, nothing serious happens. But OK, if your arc has its origin on a singular set, but the remaining of the arc is outside, some interesting behavior appears, and you have to measure uh, this. OK, so for. Uh, uh, I, I will assume now that x is of pure dimension d, uh, just for, for simplicity. And I have the Jacobian ideal of x, which is the some fitting ideal of, uh, of uh, the Keller differential. So the fitting ideal is you take the Jacobian, uh, Jacobian matrix, and it's uh, the ideal generated by certain minors. So it's, uh, I think it's a minor of orders, uh, number of variables, a num minus number of equations, something like that. But OK, it's not important for this talk. And now uh, I will consider arcs. On uh, so this, this is, uh, this is, uh, this is uh, an ideal. And I can consider the order of this ideal along t, and I ask it to be e. OK, when I pull back the ideal on, on the arc, it's just uh, t to the e generated by t to the e. OK? And I will, I, I, later, I will also introduce this notation uh, It's just the set, you mean? Uh, okay. Yes. Uh, so it will be important later to view Lx of a, as a scheme. But uh, uh, these are, OK, uh, this is viewed as a set, yes. So the lemma, we, which we at the time we did not realize uh, it would it was of any anything important. So uh, fix you fix a first uh, uh, natural number e, and then you take any n uh, at least e. Then you have two things. First is OK, in fact, I, I, haven't not, I haven't introduced this notation. But uh, you take the same definition because uh, n plus e is larger than e, so uh, it makes sense. And so uh, this is a precise form of, uh, of, of liftability. 
And so in particular, you get that when you truncate this guy, it's also, you get also a considerable set. I'm sorry? Is it high M plus EM? Or no. Yeah. On the right hand side. Oh, the right hand side. Oh, uh, uh, here, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, thank you. Okay. And then uh, you can just look at one step truncation. And then it's a piecewise trivial vibration. I, I, I just say what I mean by this. With fiber affine space of dimension d, where d was the dimension of x. So uh, piecewise piece uh, trivial vibration, of course, is very key. And uh, it just means that you have a partition into locally closed subset on which your trivial vibration. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, so this space LX is a problem, of course, is, is that it's not of finite type. So we can't not apply a, a usual tool of algebraic geometry. And now I will, uh, I will present two kinds of results which have some relations, but we, which, which are different. Uh, showing that for certain aspects, we, you, you have some finite, uh, some finiteness. So uh, the first question I want to present, which is the question of uh, of notarianity of of, uh, of completed local rings. This is true in any characteristic. Uh, maybe maybe K should be perfect. I don't know. Uh, so now I I I, can't, I I I want K to be perfect. And uh, so I will call a subset of. Lx uh, cylinder, if is of the form, uh, if it's an inverse image of some C with C constructible, and N uh, integral. Okay, that looks ad hoc, it seems quite natural, but in fact, it's relatively easy to check that it's it's uh, just another name for something which is present in in uh, the uh, in the EGAs. It's, it's just the same as being uh, constructible in Elix. But uh, the notion of constructibility when you are not a finite app is not perhaps not so well known. So you claim that any constructible on Elix comes from a constructible on a certain level. This is what I, I'm, I'm saying. I will say right now. So what is a constructible in general? So we, 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 we usually it's just a, a Boolean combination uh, of uh, finite Boolean combination of open and closed subset, but in a more general situation, it's defined as follow. You have the notion of uh, being retrocompact. So being re retrocompact may mean each time you, inter you intersect with some often open quasi-compact, you're still quasi-compact. And then the general notion of constructible set is that uh, just finite Boolean combination of open retrocompact subset. And so with this definition, you, you have this more conceptual description of cylinders. 
Yes. A really stupid question. Yes. I'm trying to process the second statement. Is, is it like a, a sort of implicit function theorem? You're in the second part of you. I mean, inflate in very broad. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now I will introduce certain points on the R space. So this notion was developed by Regera. I mean, these cylinders they were uh, very essential in, in, co in, uh, in constructing motivic integration in, at, uh, where the story started. Uh, and so the definition of Regera is uh, a point uh, of Lx is stable. I'm sorry for the, okay, so too many things are already called stable, I mean, but I'm not uh, responsible for this uh, definition. Uh, if phi is a generic point of some uh, irreducible cylinder in Lx. And what do I mean by uh, I, uh, uh, an, a cylinder being irreducible? It just means that its Zariski closure is irreducible. <laughs> and then you have this very nice theorem. Take if take phi uh, NARC, which is not completely There is a, a functoriality of L, and so I can view the arcs on the singular s part as being a subset of Lx. So I take phi an arc, which is not completely inside. Of course, it, mo it may have its origin inside, but. And, and uh, phi is stable. Then I, if you take the local ring, you complete it, you get uh, a Noetherian ring. Now I just want to, OK. I will uh, present a, a, a way to prove this uh, later in my talk. But right now, I will just explain what's the use of this. So it's uh, used <coughs> via a curve selection lemma in the proofs. There are two known proofs of the Nash conjecture for surfaces. So the proofs are by uh, De Bobe, Dia, and, and Pereira on one hand, and then later on another proof by De Fenex and Do Campo. Okay, so let me explain the, the, this curve selection lemma. I, I want to write a, a statement. I will draw a picture, OK, uh, to save uh, time. So I'm in the space of R. This is C, a cylinder, I, uh, or constructible set. I have C prime, another one, which is bigger, or C lies in the closure of C prime, depending on, OK? And I have a point here, which is generic, which is a stable arc. So here the picture is on the arc space, so a point corresponds to an arc, and we will consider arcs in the arc space. That's like. Okay, so if you were in a nice finite dimensional situation, then uh, things would be, you, you, you have a curve selection lemma saying that, okay, uh, you have a, a formal uh, 
a formal arc with a generic point line in C prime and in uh, in uh, and the spatial point is and here having that this local ring at phi is Noetherian is just enough for the proof to work and so you have this and uh, also I should explain uh, what is uh, this Nash conjecture. So this was the main content of the paper by Nash. It was just as this after uh, Ionaka proved uh, his uh, resolution theorem. So it was resolution, Ionaka's resolution was completely new at the time. And uh, what uh, Nash wanted to understand was uh, what he called the essential uh, components of resolutions, so to speak, those who are, who are there in any resolution. Okay, one can give a precise definition, I won't do, but let's concentrate on the case of surfaces. For surfaces, you have the notion of minimal resolution, and then you can take the irreducible co ex uh, component of the exceptional divider. Okay? Now you take, uh, uh, with, with, a not with my notation, with the notation we, we, we have considered, we can take this. So this just means the uh, arcs in Lx whose origin lies on the singular locus. And so uh, Nash was, was uh, concerned with uh, irreducible components of this guy. And uh, the conjecture for surfaces was that, was that there is a 1-1 one -one correspondence uh, with this set and the set of uh, the irreducible uh, components of uh, exceptional divisor of a minimal resolution. So x is a surface. <coughs> Do you mean pi minus 1 of what? Of L or L0? Of L of x singular. Uh, oh. No, there is no L, I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. Okay. Okay, so this conjecture was proved uh, by these two group of people. First by the f first group, and then a few years later by the second group. And they use this uh, very strong notoriety property. You, ca you can try to extend the conjecture to any dimension, but you have counterexample uh, uh, starting in dimension three, so it's a bit mysterious. But it there is no minimal resolution. Right? No, no, but you are <laughs> you you have a, you can uh, you can uh, you can devise the notion of uh, essential uh, divisorial val valuation and so on and uh, okay. But uh, there is no meaning in, in, in trying to state it because uh, they are counterexamples. Okay. Now I would like to 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 to, to discuss uh, some mo uh, more recent work or quite uh, very recent because it was an archive this year by uh, Defernex and Docampo uh, that uh, sheds new light on this regular work. So it's not their work on the Nash problem, it's something else. They are doing something where that strangely uh, no one did be considered before, is uh, Computing, understanding uh, uh, the Keller differential on the arc space. For this, they they do the following. I mean. Okay. Uh, this is not their notation, but oh, 
OK. A point of helix corresponds to, to an arc. But there is no, uh, OK, the, the only morphism, natural morphism from helix to x is just uh, a, a assigning to an arc its origin. You cannot assign to an arc the arc itself as, some, as a subobject. But you can do this by uh, considering, so to speak, uh, the universal family of arcs over helix. Okay? I, 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 don't, uh, I don't have to define it, I guess. Okay? So it's a universal uh, family of arcs. And you have something similar with, uh, with LN, OK? Here you said you use bat theorem. Uh -huh. You use bat theorem? No, there is no bat theorem here. X is anything or alpha? Or, uh, what is L tilde? It's, it's not a scheme? Or it's no, but I can, OK. Yes. In the affine case, if, if LX is, okay, yeah. is just uh, is this, is this guy, is spectrum of this guy, then the, the other one is just uh, this guy. Yeah, but if it's not a fun, here you assume it's a fun, x is a fun. Uh, I mean, to give this definition, I, uh, <laughs> but then you, you, then you, put, you can glue it. I mean, you, I don't think you, no, you, they don't need a bad theorem. Okay. And so now the theorem is. Is the following? It's they have uh, and you have something similar with with ends. So of course I have to explain what is P. Kp is a, is a small uh, disturbance, but not a big thing. So it's a, it's a locally free uh, sheaf of rank one. And so in affine, uh, uh, so on a, if I'm in the affine setting, it's just this guy. So it's a negative part, so to speak. So of the kind of duality going on there and, and uh, and a similar expression uh, in degree in level n okay so point, uh, okay this this is very nice uh, computation it's not hard uh, you have to to do the right thing but it's it's just rather rather formal but it uh, it helps a lot. Okay, from once you from this formula, they derive. Okay, for if for any point uh, in X, uh, an expression for the embedding dimension. So embedding dimension of a local ring is just 
the dimension of uh, m, m over m2. Okay? But isn't it infinite? The paper? Yeah, because Lx is infinite. No, but the point is the scheme. No, but it could be, it could be infinite. Oh. Ah, this is education. Yeah, yeah it, it can be infinite. Because uh, in the five minutes, uh, uh, we will say uh, something uh, in terms of finiteness. Okay? But it's true uh, whenever, uh, in any case. So you take the image. So you take the dimension of the of the, uh, of the Zeissky closure. And uh, so you have this, as this, so you have this as a limit, and this kind of expression already occurred in motivic indication. And but uh, since this is closely related to omega, they are able to, to do this computation. And then, uh, of course, uh, uh, you have that one side is finite if and only if the other side is finite. And uh, so, and f and f and so, this implies not 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 to dif without too much difficulties. The following theorem: Do you take a point which doesn't lie in L of the singular locus? Or no, uh, it's uh, always true. But I guess, and if it lies in the infinite lo in, in the singular locus, it's infinite on both sides. I don't think there is any condition on phi for this to be true. So the embedding dimension is finite if and only if uh, phi uh, does not lie in the. Okay, so this answers uh, of a question. And phi is stable. Embedding dimension is uh, dimension of m over m two. It's finite. It's finite. Ah, oh, okay. <laughs> 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 okay. So you get uh, easily this because uh, you you may express this condition in terms of, of this. And then uh, you get the neutrality for free. This is, this is incredible. But because the Regeras proof wa was quite hard. But there is something general in EGA, I think, that you take a limit of local ring, the ten local rings, and m over m squared is the same. Is the same then somehow in the limit you get the uh, material. Also, did something like this, so there is a... Yeah, but here you need, a, I mean, you don't... There are certain, at a certain point you are not again, at a certain point you are not, and, and you... Okay, wait wait one second, or maybe a bit more, but uh, you will see the situation is, 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 is not nice. And uh, so, uh, what, what to do... Okay, then uh, you have the lemma or remark in any generality, uh, if you have uh, a local ring, I mean, it's, it's, so this is a small c. The embedding dimension is finite if and only if uh, the completion is notarian. This is an easy exercise in commutative algebra. And then you get regular theorem for free, and you get mem even a bonus, because you get a characterization of stability in terms of the tiny of the. In the case where the embedding dimension is finite, is it also the case that the maximal ideal is finitely generated? Uh, I mean, uh, Um, I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, okay. 
And so let me make two remarks. Let me make two remarks. So remark even if uh, phi is stable, uh, this guy is may not be may not be notarian. There are easy examples. And even if phi is stable and uh, this guy is notarian, it may not be uh, may not be excellent. In fact, it may be uh, reduced, but uh, completion uh, not uh, reduced. So it's interesting because you see that uh, a part of the pathology of uh, commutative algebra, you can already observe it for uh, when you're working on arc spaces. OK. So. Uh, And so this lemma I wrote here on the blackboard, we, you, we, we, we need, did, did not see it because I, I did not provide any details on proof, but in fact, it plays a role again and again. In fact, there are some people uh, who divide the general uh, Breshek and uh, Roser uh, wrote a paper where they divide the uh, general principle from which uh, many different, uh, this lemma, this was a corollary and other statement like the Drin, uh, Drinfeld, uh, Greenberg, Kashdan, I will, I will introduce now also. Okay, so there is a general framework but that subsumes uh, this kind of statement, but uh, okay, it's not my, my aim to, to present this. So, uh, my last part. And so uh, there is also a, a theorem of, of, uh, of Greenberg, another Greenberg with an I, not two E's, and Kashdan, which was uh, later uh, 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 provided another proof by Drinfeld, which says the following. And so here uh, you have you you f you take arc which is not completely in the singular locus, then you take this completion which may or may not be notarian, but anyhow it's. Uh, Okay, so what does it say? It says that as formal schemes, uh, you are, so to speak, finite dimensional. But this is far from, this is different from being notarian. Okay. It says that you are the local ring of, uh, of, uh, of uh, localization of finite dimensional. Uh, finite type object. And here you have uh, just uh, the affine space is uh, in any in uh, infinite number of variables. And uh, you take, say, the point 0, and you complete. And this is what it says. This is uh, very useful. For instance, in a paper by, uh, by Boutier. An infinite number. How it get Newtonian uh, in special cases? This is this. <laughs> yeah, it, it, one has to think. I mean, at least at first one thinks when when see a contradiction, but I mean uh, there is no contradiction. But if you take this uh, completed tensor product yes. with infinite number of variables, yes. then I think that there the 
the thing is not material. There is no I mean, the two statements that are true, I mean. But what do you want? That we trust you on just saying this? <laughs> yes, because, I mean. Uh, <laughs> Can you explain? <laughs> no, but uh, when, uh, it's, it's, it's not. Uh, there is no contradiction, no. Uh. No, maybe you mean that you localize it with another part of the infinite dimensional space, or not the close, not the origin, or. It's it's more yes, it's an infinite dimensional space. Yes, right. it's Otherwise, it's not finite dimensional. Yes. What do you mean, finite dimensional? You mean a king point? You have to remove the more. You have to remove infinity points. Maybe uh, no, you have an infinite space. Yeah, yeah. Okay, the point is, okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, let me, okay, let me. Uh, Yes, it's of infinite dimension, yeah. Well, the point of a key is that it's possible. Yeah, or consider generic point of infinite dimensional space, it has zero dimension. Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, uh, I'm afraid that's the theorem of uh, Rinfeld and, and, uh, and Greenberg and Kazan. <laughs> I will, I will give, provide you an, I will provide you another a more general statement in, in a few minutes. So there, maybe you will. Uh, may, maybe I wrote something, but maybe I, I made a mistake when I when I stated it. But I, I will, I will write, uh, provide you a, a more general statement. So just in smooth case, you have either infinite dimensional space, you can have a generic point. Yeah, but the formal scheme is describing the formal. Yeah, but you can see the zero. Atmosphere is a point of time. Okay. <laughs> so uh, this statement, or maybe a small modification of it, but I, 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 I'm essentially sure of this statement, uh, was used by uh, uh, Boutier and Go and Sakelaridis. I mean, uh, to, okay. The point is that on, you would like to, to have perverse sheaves on LX, interstellar cohomology, but it does not make sense at this stage. But once you have this kind of decomposition, at least formally, you have something fi of finite type, and you can uh, speak of, of at least some kind of germ of intersection cohomology sheaf. And uh, if you work uh, over a finite field, say. You may take trace of Frobenius, and they showed in some special cases that this trace of Frobenius was computing the real thing, what you were interested in. But the problem was to define an intersection cohomology complex on Lx. And this is uh, what I want to present in maybe the f five last minutes. So this is a very nice work of Boutier and Kajdan. Okay. So Boutier and Kajdan provide a kind of global uh, version of the, of, of the DGK uh, theorem you did not like. And uh, so fix uh, some uh, E. Uh, I remind you that this notation, so it was uh, it 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 was just uh, okay uh, an inequality inside ex okay uh, instead of some equality. So this means that you are uh, not too close from the singular uh, locus, but of course E may move, so it's not a big such a big deal. 
So uh, they prove the following. So there exists some scheme z with a morphism to this guy. And uh, another morphism uh, this. OK, so with G pro smooth, I will OK, just a, a projective limit, field hand projective limit of smooth morphism, surjective, and uh, inducing. OK, there is some hypothesis which I forgot. So it's K algebraically closed. OK, and using uh, an isomorphism on a formal neighborhood at each point, <coughs> at each k point of z. And uh, u is a uh, proital, and y is a finite type. Yeah, but maybe then maybe it's the zero. Yeah, maybe maybe the zero. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry for that. Yes. So how can it be if it is for? So you don't want this to be pro et al. The 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 G. You said it's a isomorphism on the formal neighborhood. U U is pro et al. No, no, but the G G also looks like the G looks like pro et al because it's the complete well. If you have an inverse limit of smooth things, of course you don't. They can uh, change the dimension. And so okay, that's a statement. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but I'm sorry, but this, <coughs> this is extremely easy to make. I mean, you you to you make epsilon changes, and then something which was true becomes false. I probably made it by by, by writing this zero, and so I, I don't. I want to stick to what. Uh, uh, okay. And so the rules, so it's a global version. So, um, so as someone said, I mean, uh, the original lemma, you, you, it's a kind of uh, implicit function, and so you do this job to prove the GK uh, uh, Drinfeld uh, Greenberg agent theorem, for instance. But you have some uh, some choices, and uh, and here the the idea for the proving that is. Okay, you don't care about the choices. I mean, you put all the choices, so to speak, in, in this scheme Z, which is uh, very big, but uh, which uh, is endowed with a global uh, map to, uh, to, to, to something like that. So they, they call this an atlas. I mean, this is very justified. And I don't think, I think I'm already over time, so I, I, I won't explain more. I will just uh, explain in two words what they're doing. So they int introduce a top, uh, topology, which they call the post-smooth topology. Uh, and uh, which is related with to the Poetal topology, but uh, uh, you, 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 OK? And uh, this uh, allows them to uh, build a nice category uh, of Eladic uh, Sheaves on this kind of people with uh, the six operations, the uh, uh, duality operator. And of course, it's compatible with if you may increase E. So you could take uh, the co limit of these categories. And uh, you, they are also able to introduce the notion of, uh, notion of, uh, of perversity and to define intersection complexes. So they define a global version of IC complexes, and they, they for which they check that they correspond exactly to what they did. I mean, it's easy, but that was done uh, previously just in, in the at the formal level. Okay. 
<laughs> I think uh, it's time to stop. Uh, before, before asking, before, before, be, be, yeah, be, before potential question, uh, I think it's also, also time to to thank the organizers for the wonderful job uh, they did. <laughs> and also to thank Masaki for the wonderful mathematics he gave us, and for also what he will continue to give us for many years. Just that your five p or five whatever there is is k rational. That's why uh, there's no contradiction because in the case but where it's going to rational, it's not k rational. Yes, to remove zero. It's not always a infinity zero. No, but should, the p or five there is k rational. That uh, that's it's not. It's a, you have to add of k. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah, offer? No, so I want to produce a counterexample to one of your. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> good. Uh, I'm the only. I'm. Uh, I, I will be the the, the only uh, person responsible for that, uh, not the authors of the papers. No, okay, so let us. I want to look at a non-normal surface of ten by pinching. That is, you take a line in A two. Let us say the x-axis, and you get <laughs> x to x square. Yes. And so you pinch using this. Yes. And then you have a, a, now a singular locus, yes. and such that if you take a curve on this singular locus, it, the, if you take a, a, a formal curve which is non zero tangent, it doesn't lift to the normalization. So the idea is that in the arc space, in the neighborhood, you get just the arc space of the singular locus in order to the full thing. And then you have written a formula for the dimension of the uh, embedded, the, the Rhodes formula with, for the dimension of m over m yes. square. Ah, but it is, uh, maybe it is, I'm just looking at k points and not, uh, I'm looking, no, no, excuse me, so it's not, I didn't prove it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Good for me. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. 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 Thanks.